baby Moses. Exodus 1 to 2:10. The Israelites were living in the land of Egypt where they had become slaves. In this lesson, we will see how God kept his promise by sending them a deliverer, baby Moses. Do you know what the word courage means? To have courage means that a person is very brave when something fearful happens. That means they act very boldly and help save others from danger. Perhaps they would save someone from drowning or help someone escape from a fire. They would be called a hero. In this lesson, we will learn about an Israelite mother named Jochebed, who saved her baby from being killed. Her son was Moses, who would become a great hero of the Hebrew people. This event is told to us in the book of Exodus. Exodus is the second book of the Bible and is found in the Old Testament. Exodus is a word that means exit because it tells how Israel left Egypt. Exodus follows the book of Genesis and is one of the books of law. Let's say the first five books of law in the Old Testament together. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. For 400 years, Joseph's family, the Israelites, had lived in Egypt. While the Israelites were living in Egypt, their families grew and grew. They lived in the land of Goshen, which was very fertile. They raised sheep and cattle, and God blessed them greatly. After Joseph died, new pharaohs took his place. By now, they had a new pharaoh or king. This pharaoh didn't know Joseph like the old one did, and he was afraid of the Israelites, who were foreigners in his country. The Israelites' lives were very different than the Egyptians. The Israelites worshipped one god. The Egyptians worshipped many gods. The Hebrews were wanderers. They were shepherds and farmers. The Egyptians were builders. They built the pyramids. So, the larger the population of the Hebrews grew, the more afraid the Egyptians became. When Pharaoh realized that there were more Hebrews than Egyptians in the country, he didn't like it. The Pharaoh said, These Hebrews are becoming dangerous to us. There are too many of them. If war breaks out, they will join our enemies and fight against us. So Pharaoh sent armed Egyptians to Goshen to threaten the Hebrews and forced them to work as slaves. The Israelite slaves worked in the hot sun all day. They made bricks mixed with mortar, built walls, dug ditches, and laid pipes. If they did not work hard, the Egyptians beat them with whips. The tough slave masters made them build the supply cities of Pithom and Ramis. How much God's people suffered 
under the cruelties of slavery. Their life was miserable. The Hebrews were often sad and discouraged, but hope never left their hearts. They remembered God's promise to lead them out of Egypt in 400 years. So they prayed to God, stayed close together, and did all they could to help each other in their difficulties. The more the Pharaoh tried to mistreat them, the more the children of Israel multiplied and grew. They had many children. The two midwives who helped the Hebrew women deliver their babies were called Shipporah and Pua. A midwife is a woman who helps a mother give birth. Well, all these children made the Egyptians even more afraid. They forced the Hebrews to carry heavy loads of mortar and brick and to work even longer and harder. Others were forced to become carpenters, jewelers, and other craftsmen. But all of them were slaves. But the Pharaoh was still worried that there were too many Israelites. Listen, I've got an idea about a way to solve this problem. The Pharaoh then called the two midwives, Shipporah and Pua, to come to his throne. He ordered the Hebrew nurses to kill all the Hebrew ba boy babies as soon as they were born. Only the baby girls could live. He wanted to make sure that no Hebrew boys grew up to be soldiers to fight the Egyptians. As the Hebrew fathers and mothers heard the dreadful news, they could hardly believe it. Surely no ruler would be so cruel as to command that all baby boys should be murdered like this. But thankfully, the nurses obeyed God and let the babies live. When the Pharaoh heard about this, he called the midwives to ask why the baby boys were not killed. The excuse they gave was that the Hebrew women were giving birth to baby boys before they had time to get to them. In this situation, disobeying the authority was the right thing to do. God does not expect us to obey leaders who disobey him. But Pharaoh was determined to have his way. He gave orders to his soldiers that every baby boy born to a Hebrew woman must be thrown into the River Nile. <sighs> Terror filled the hearts of the people as the soldiers took babies away from their mothers and threw them into the Nile River to drown. One day, God sent a baby boy to the home of a Hebrew couple named Amram and Jochebed. These godly Hebrews already had a girl named Miriam, who was 13 years old, and a little three-year-old boy named Aaron. The new little baby was born after the king had sent out his message that all the baby boys were to be thrown into the Nile River. This little baby was strong, healthy, and unusually beautiful child. How much his mother loved him. She made up her mind that the soldiers wouldn't get her baby. Not if she could help it. The family decided they would hide him maybe in a closet or under a basket. 
and perhaps when Moses started to cry, they would have Aaron make loud noises to cover up the sound. Somehow, they managed to keep him hidden for three months. But it's pretty hard to hide a three-month-old baby anywhere. He just cries too loudly when he gets hungry or tired. Finally, Jochebed and Amram knew they couldn't keep their secret any longer. They asked God for wisdom and thought of a plan. Jochebed made a basket out of bulrushes, which were strong reeds that grew along the Nile River. She coated the basket inside and out with black sticky tar, and then fixed a little soft bed inside the basket. Next, she laid the precious little baby in it. Miriam probably asked, Mama, what are we going to do with him? Mother answered, The tar has sealed the basket so it will not sink. It's like a boat, an ark. We're going to hide the ark among the tall reeds down at the river's edge and trust the Lord to care for our little baby. Early the next morning, the two went down to the riverbank and gently placed little baby Moses in the shallow water among the bulrushes. The baby's big sister Miriam stayed and watched from a distance to see what would happen to her little brother. After a while, Miriam heard someone Pharaoh's daughter, the princess, and her maidens were coming down to the river to take a bath. Suddenly, the princess spied the little basket floating among the reeds in the river. Quickly, go get the basket and let's see what's in it, she commanded one of her maids. The maid brought the basket out of the river and carried it to the princess. When she opened the basket, she saw the little baby crying. He must be one of the Hebrew babies, exclaimed the princess, and she felt sorry for him. Then the princess said, Don't cry, little one. I will take you home with me to be my very own. Miriam, who had been watching from her hiding place in the bushes, walked bravely up to the princess and asked her, Would you like for me to go and find one of the Hebrew women to nurse the baby for you? Pharaoh's daughter replied, Yes, do! So Miriam ran to find her mother. When Miriam returned with her mother, the princess asked, Will you take this baby and nurse him for me until he is older? If you will care for him, I will pay you good wages. So, Jochebed took the baby in her arms and cuddled him close. Just think, Jochebed would be paid for taking care of her own baby. Jochebed was glad that God had protected her baby. She took good care of her baby and taught him to love God, pray, and sing songs of praise. Eventually, he grew old enough to live at the palace, and she took her son back to the princess. When the princess saw him, she named him Moses, which is an Egyptian word that means drawn out. She said, because I drew him out of the water. Now lots of attention was given to the young Moses because everyone thought that someday he would be the Pharaoh of Egypt. Moses had the best teachers to tutor him in all the wisdom of Egypt. But God had a special plan for Moses' life. 
it was going to be something much more important than being the prince of Egypt. Moses' mother and his sister Miriam acted wisely to keep Moses safe when he was in danger. Did you know that we too can depend on God to help us act wisely no matter what situation we find ourselves? God loves us and cares for us. He promises to always help us. Our memory verse is 2 Timothy 1, 7. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. God is promising us to always be with us and help us in difficult situations. He wants to give us the power to think and act boldly for him. He promises to give us a plan to help us. Let's say our verse again. 2 Timothy 1.7 For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. When you have a fearful problem to solve, what should you do? First, we need to think about God's love for us and how He controls everything. Then, we should ask God to help us be brave and do what He tells us. We can thank God for His promise to help us all the time. Let's pray. Lord, you want us to face our fears with courage. Please help us to learn how to think and act in a calm, brave way when we get afraid. Help us to have courage like the midwives did. Help us to face our problems with courage like Moses' mother did. We always want to remember that you have given us power to overcome our fears. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Remember, God wants us to have courage and trust Him.